In this video, we're going to find the average rate of change from an equation. So we have this scenario here. The profit in dollars of a car manufacturer is given as P of X is equal to negative 10,000 X squared plus 100,000 X, where X represents the number of cars sold in thousands. What is the average rate of change between 2,000 and 7,000 cars sold? And what is the average rate of change for the first 10,000 cars sold? So let's start off with the first question. What is the average rate of change between 2,000 and 7,000 cars sold? So the first thing you want to figure out in a question like this is what's the dependent variable and what's the independent variable? And since profit is measured in terms of the number of cars sold in terms of X, we know that the profit depends on the number of cars sold. So the profit which is in dollar terms is the dependent variable and the number of cars sold is the independent variable. So average rate of change is the amount the dependent variable changes per or divided by the amount that the independent variable changes. So what is the average rate of change between 2,000 and 7,000 cars? Well, since X represents the number of cars, cars sold in thousands, then we know we're looking for the average rate of change between X is equal to 2 and X is equal to 7. Remember, because x is in thousands, so an x value of 2 represents 2,000 and an x value of 7 represents 7,000. So we have our values for the independent variable, x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 7, and we have to find the average rate of change between those, but we don't have the value of the dependent variable at those certain uh, sales or at those certain values of the independent variable. So what we have to do is we have to plug in 2 and 7 into the equation and figure out what the values of the dependent variable will be at those specific x values. So taking those x values and then plugging them into the equation, so if we plug in 2 for x here we would get 160,000 of profit. So if you're selling 2,000 cars then you're making $160,000 worth of profit. Plugging in seven into the equation, we get 210,000. So at 7,000 cars, you're making $210,000 worth of profit. So it's, uh, it's useful, at least visually, to put these in coordinate form. So remember the dependent variable is the number of cars sold. So that's the 2,000. And the profit is the dependent variable. And then this would be 7 and 210,000. And now when we calculate the average rate of change, it's easier to see how to do it when we have actual coordinates. So taking these coordinates and plugging them into the average rate of change formula, the numerator is the change in the dependent variable, so the 210,000 minus the 160,000. And then the denominator is the change in the independent variable, the number of cars sold, so the 7 minus the 2. So when we simplify those, we get 50,000 over 5, which simplifies to 10,000. And this is dollars, right? Because um, the dependent variable is profit, which is measured in dollars. So the average rate of change is $10,000. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Per 1x. And since x represents thousands, this average rate of change is $10,000 per 1,000 cars sold. All right, one more time because the, if you remember the units that we measure average rate of change in is a certain number of the dependent variable, so the $10,000 per one unit change in the independent variable. However, in this case, one unit 
or um, one unit of X represents 1,000. So we have to make sure that we put that. It's $10,000 per 1,000 cars sold. That's what the average rate of change is between 2,000 and 7,000 cars sold. So be careful with these types of questions where you're representing the independent variable in another uh, amount, so in thousands in this case. I guess you can also take the 10,000 and divide it by 1,000 and you would get $10 per car sold, but uh, in my opinion you should just leave it like this with whatever the uh, independent variable is represented as in the question. Now for the second part of the question, what's the average rate of change for the first 10,000 cars sold? So the first 10,000 cars sold, remember the average rate of change is always between two points. So whenever you see something like the first 10,000, it's always between zero and whatever that number is. So between zero cars sold and 10,000 cars sold. So we know that the independent variable, the two points of the independent variable are going to be x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 10 because remember x is in thousands so 10,000 is represented by an x value of 10. So that would be, we would find the average rate of change between 0 and 10 and that would be the same as finding the average rate of change for the first 10,000 cars sold. So now let's figure out what the profit at each of these points is. So if we plug in zero for x in the profit equation, we would get zero. And if we plug in 10 into the profit equation, we get zero as well. So average rate of change is pretty easy in this case. The change in the dependent variable is just zero, zero minus zero, over the change in the uh, dependent variable is 10. So we end up getting zero dollars per 1,000 cars sold. So the average rate of change is zero. And you may be asking yourself why that is. And that's because if you were to take this uh, graph and graph it, you would get a parabola that looks like this. So at zero, it's at the origin, and then at 10, at an x value 10, it also hits a profit of zero. So it seems like this car manufacturer is making profit, 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 all the way, he makes his max profit when he sells 5,000 cars, and then after 5,000 cars, something starts happening. I don't know what happens in the company, maybe the workers get more tired, but the profit starts going down. And at a value of 10,000 cars sold, the profit is zero. So if we were to take a, uh, draw a secant line between these two points, it would just be a horizontal line, and the slope of that secant line would be zero. So the answer for that is zero. But uh, the main takeaway from this part of the question is that whenever you're given for the first something, it's always between zero and that amount because the average rate of change is always between two points.